Can you just hear me? Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise Greetings to each one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is always a joy to be in the presence of God as a corporate body of Christ. And um, I believe that the Lord has something special for us to hear from God's word. So let us turn to Mark chapter 1, 29 through 34. Mark chapter 1, 29 through 34. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. As we know, we're going through the series looking unto Jesus. And the last couple of weeks... We have been exploring the subtopic of the miracles of Jesus during his earthly ministry. In the next slide, we see a breakdown, as you've seen this over and over again. But when we explore the miracles of Jesus, as you see in the bottom there, the power of Jesus was manifested in four major ways. Power over nature, power over demons, power over sickness, and power over death. Last week, Minu talked about the first miracle of Jesus, at least recounted in the Gospel of John, which is the miracle of water turning into wine at the wedding of Cana, where Jesus demonstrated the power over nature. Today, as we just read, we will read about an incident where Jesus displayed the power over sickness. And this portion is mentioned in the three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So the gospel writers, inspired by the Holy Spirit, really wanted the church to, to know about this incident, wanted to emphasize about what happened here. So the title of my message today is, Lift It Up to Serve Jesus. And even before the Mission Sunday was scheduled, this was a message that was in my heart, and as the Mission Sunday was rescheduled to this day, I felt like the Lord was confirming that this is a message that is for the church. And so let us come with an attitude of prayer, and let us seek the Lord together as we hear from God's word. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence, Lord. We lay aside every distraction, Lord, every doubt, every fear. Lord, anything that, Lord, is in the way of the proclamation of the word of God, in this moment I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and we proclaim freedom, O Lord God, to hear the word, O Lord God. Let that word be planted in every human heart. Let the hearts be fertile to hear your word. The power is in your word, and not in the minister, not in the church, not in the sound system, not in anything else, but the power is in the word. And we pray, O Lord God, the manifestation of your power and your holy Spirit were made known to us, O oh God, today as we come before your word with a thirsty heart, as we come before your word with hunger to hear from you, Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you would speak into the every heart seated here, that every person seated here and listening, O oh God, are doing this for a particular purpose and particular time and for this moment, Lord, we know that there is a reason for this and we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen, amen. As I, was, as I was meditating on, on this uh, passage, three observations came to my heart. As we go through these verses, first, Jesus cares about your family. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her, and she began to serve them. When we, uh, meditate, when we think about the conversion, or, or at least the call of Peter, and we talked about this in previous weeks, uh, Peter, at least in that moment, was in a boat. Jesus 
steps into his boat and starts preaching and then performs a miracle in which Peter is like, depart from me, I'm a sinner. And by the end of it, we, hear, we read that Peter left his nets and followed him. He left his livelihood. To me, I thought, did Peter have a chance to discuss this with his family? You know, he, he, we hear if he has a mother-in-law, of course, he has a wife and perhaps children as well. But in that moment where Christ was revealed in his heart, he didn't take time to ponder about the strategic decision that he was about to take. It was a moment's notice that he felt like he should drop everything and follow Jesus. So when we see here in Mark chapter 1, verse 30, Jesus is in the area uh, performing miracles, and now they're all going to Simon and Andrew's house. And now if we read all three uh, recounts of this incident, it, it, it reads a little bit differently from passage to passage, but essentially the, the incident is the same. So when Jesus comes into Simon's house, Simon's mother-in-law is ill with fever. And so, of course, Jesus being there, Jesus the miracle maker as they knew him to be, they immediately, we see here, verse 30, immediately told him about her. In verse 31, Jesus, it says that Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her and began, she began to serve them. There are many decisions that when we make individual decisions for the Lord, especially, first of all, in our salvation story. In our, in, when we make decisions for the Lord to follow Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, it can affect our family in many ways. We don't have the, we don't, if, if the Lord is truly working in your heart, the concerns of your family and what will happen to my kids and so on, all those things are put aside because you have seen a greater glory You've seen the glory of Jesus and the plans that you have thought that you would make in the future all become secondary to that primary glory that you see. More than the glories of the earth, more than what you could make out of your life, all is put to the side because you see the glory of Jesus. And so Peter here, I, I, I just want to be imaginative and think, you know, here's spiritual warfare in Peter, Peter's home. He makes a, a key decision to follow Jesus, and all of a sudden his mother-in-law falls sick. And Jesus is coming into their house. And my, the mother-in-law just assumed that she was, a, she was helping around the house. And now there's a crisis at home. Uh, in, you know, just imagine this 2,000 years ago, people are, you know, when people caught, catch fever, you don't really know if they will recover from it. There's no medication, so to speak, at that time. There's no antibiotics or uh, vaccines or anything like that. So uh, uh, Luke says this was a high fever. And so this was a serious illness that suddenly came upon that family. And I believe this is why the gospel preachers wanted to emphasize this. is because the gospel writers wanted to show that when you step out for Jesus... Jesus is care, he cares about your family as well. It is not an individual decision alone that Jesus sees. He sees that you have earthly concerns, that earthly needs, or earthly dependencies. People are depending on you. People, he knows that people need you wherever you are planted, the family that you have, the commitments you have. Jesus is, is taking into account all those things. And when in the time of need... Jesus, when he comes into our homes, when he comes into our life, he's there to deliver and give us comfort in that moment. This is not a, I mentioned this earlier in one of the messages, this is not a transactional kind of thing. Oh, because, Peter, because you came and followed me, I'm going to take care of you. No, Jesus is genuinely wanting to help. And that's an aspect of Jesus I think we sometimes miss. We think, oh, Jesus, I will do this, and then please heal me. I will... Jesus just wants to help. He's a good God. He's a helpful God. He, he sees the struggle that we are going through. He sees the pain that we are going through. And when we come to him and we ask him genuinely, he will hear it. He will hear it. Now, when we we'll move forward, second observation. Jesus lifts us up so that we can freely serve. 
Verse 31, when he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, the fever left her and she began to serve them. When I thought about this word, fever left her, many times when we think about illnesses in our life, we, we make that part of our identity. You know, when we meet people, we will say, not, not everybody will say this, but maybe to a doctor or somebody will say, I'm a diabetic, I'm a heart patient, I'm this, that, or the other. But when we look here, it said that the fever that was upon this mother-in-law left her. It was apart from her identity. So, like, my encouragement to each one of us is, like, don't get so obsessed over the illnesses that are on you. It is, it is not you. The illnesses are, are not part of you. It's not part of your identity. You should not obsess over those things. That the Lord, if he wills, and in his time, he will take it away from you. And, and to show you that the illness that is upon you is not you. It is, this is not you. It could be any form of illness in our life. Physical, mental, emotional. And this is a struggle that I know. Many people have, that you have defined yourself by your illness. And the Lord is saying that separate that illness from who you are. I love you. Your illness is not you. Your illness is not a curse on you. This is a part and parcel of the fallenness that we have to walk through in this earth. Hallelujah. And we see here, as the fever left her, she was freed to do what she wanted to do. Or free to do what she was gifted to do. Free to do what she was called to do. She began to serve them immediately. Got up, she ran to the kitchen, I assume. She, so she started cleaning up things and taking care of things. Imagine that moment. One second you're laying on the bed, you could not do, even lift up a finger under high fever. Next moment Jesus lifts her up and she is now serving with freedom. There's no quarantining or social distancing. She believed that God healed her at that moment and she just started serving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are two major reasons, and I, I have to be quick here because time is going really fast. There are two major reasons why Jesus is, was so inclined to bring physical healing in this world. And we need to understand that in order to understand why doesn't God heal today sometimes. First, in Jesus' ministry, Jesus wanted to show that God the Father through the Spirit wanted to attest, it, attest his ministry and his title as the anointed Messiah, as the anointed one in this world. Jesus is the promised Messiah for the Jewish people. So Jesus, Jesus wanted to attest his message of the gospel because of the accompanying signs and wonders. The, the signs and the wonders and the healings came with Jesus so that the message that he proclaimed, that the kingdom of God was at hand, was true, needed to be attested. When people saw that things were changing in the natural realm, that people then looked to him as the supernatural one that has come into this world. Second, the reason why physical healing was brought on this earth is that Jesus was foreshadowing the fullness of the kingdom in the ages to come, in the new heavens and the new earth. And as the kingdom of God is here and not yet, as Jesus came, he is showing that, look, here's what I'm able to do as I'm in this world. I mean, I'm showing you a glimpse of the world to come where there is no tears, there is no sorrow, there is no diseases. Hallelujah. So each deliverance that we receive from answer prayer today, see that as a special grace in the temporal realm to show us a glimpse of the absolute deliverance that is to come. When we think about the mother-in-law, Peter's mother-in-law, Yes, she was delivered from fever. She was able to serve, but she passed away one day. Right? So what was the purpose of that deliverance? It was so that she could serve Jesus in freedom. Hallelujah. Now, when we think about physical healing, there is a deliverance of eternal significance that we often devalue or forget. And that is where I want to put my weight today as we are 
as we as we're thinking about missions, as we're thinking about souls, as we're thinking about evangelism. You know, pastor once said that you know sin is more serious than sickness, and pastor said that I believe in the in the height of COVID. We have to meditate on this that. Beyond every sickness that we experience, there's a deeper sickness at the heart of every mankind that no mankind can reform, no mankind can decide for themselves to, to change, no mankind can deliver themselves from the, from the chains of the slavery of death. Psalm 42-3, we know this. It says, He drew me up from the pit of destruction. In other words, in other translations, it says, He lifted me up. Just think about Jesus lifting up Peter, Peter's mother-in-law. In this way, eternally and in our souls, he lifted us up from the pit of destruction. I'm out of the miry bog, bog. He set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. And here's the purpose. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another favorite verse of mine, Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 10. And as this verse is being shown, please read it along and meditate it in your hearts. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Remember that? You were dead in your transgressions and sins. You were dead in your transgressions and sins. Let that, that, that reality once again shake us to the core. You were dead in your transgressions and sins. In which you used to live when you follow the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit in, is now at work in those who are disobedient. There are people out there that are under this condition. They're dead in their sins. They're obedient to the, the ruler of the power of the air. All of us also lived among them one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. This is the message of the gospel here. This is the bad news before the good news. But what we see here, we see the word but. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ once we were once dead. Now made alive with Christ when, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Verse 6. And God raised us up. God raised us up. With Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. What a great news. Yes, we may have been healed from diseases. But we got sick again. Yes, may have, many things may have happened in this earthly realm, but something happened in the heavenly realm, in the spiritual realm, that we were raised up with Christ. And we were seated in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Why? So that in the coming ages, verse 7, that he may show the incomparable, incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Why do we endure suffering in this earth? Why do we share the gospel when we know people are going to reject us? Why do we spend so much money overseas? It's so that in the coming ages, that he may show the incomparable riches of his grace. That we can see the fingerprints of God through our little activities in heaven when we are judged for our works. When we do a little things in, in, in the hiddenness, in the secret place, when we help people. We don't know where all this is turning to. But, and nobody never tells us the impacts of what we do. But it, there will be one time where we will see the, the incomparable riches of his grace manifested through our little works that we do. It says, verse 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And it is not yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works that no one can boast. That is just the magnitude of God's grace that we cannot boast in any of these things. Verse 10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. This is the purpose why we have been shown the incomparable grace, which God has prepared for us advance to do. Last point. Our service leads others to see Jesus. We, we may think that Peter's mother-in-law just 
served some food and, and then went our way. No, what, what happened that evening? She served Jesus, she fed Jesus, served the disciples, all for what? That evening, verse 32, Mark 1, verse thir- uh, chapter 132, that evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick and oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit demons to speak because they knew him. Luke has the same incident. He says, 440, Luke 440, he, he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. So Peter's mother-in-law's simple service to Jesus leads to a, a massive healing crusade. I want to read something about you know, Peter who sees this incident. Later, many years later, after Jesus ascends to heaven, he's in, in Joppa. And there's an old lady named Tabitha laid to death. She's dead. They cleaned her up and they, they're all mourning her. And this is in Acts chapter 9. Peter puts them all aside. He knelt down and prays. He turns to the body and says, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. She gave her his hand and raised her up. I'm just thinking about Peter here. Like, I've seen this before. You know, and so this faith that to operate and serve the Lord even in that moment. I'm just saying that every instant, in every experience that we have in our life of God doing something, God is going to use us to impart that into others around us. Hallelujah. So just to conclude my three points. Jesus cares about your family. Jesus lifts us up so that, so that we can freely serve him. And lastly, our service leads others to see Jesus. Let us close our eyes and let us pray. I feel in my heart to just say before I pray, there might be individuals here that you want to serve Jesus, but there's something holding you back. There's a deliverance that you're seeking. There's, there's anxieties, there's self-criticism, there's self-doubt, and you're just like, I, I cannot shake that. I cannot, it, it is holding me back. You, you in your heart, your desire to serve, but then there's so many, there's so many things plaguing you, and I want to pray for you particularly, and I'm not even looking, but if this is you, could you raise your hand? And everybody, clo- eyes closed. Everybody with your eyes closed, and I'm not even looking, but I'm praying for those, especially that you're like, I want to serve Jesus with all my heart. But I have a lot of things going on in my life. I, I am held back. I'm held back. The enemy is attacking me. Or, or I just have a lot of insecurities about who I am. And the man of God mentioned it today. It's not, it has nothing to do with our qualification. Jesus, Jesus does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And God gives a call in every human heart. He gives a tug in every heart to say, serve me. Hallelujah. Jesus is calling saying, serve me, follow me. And if that is you, raise your hand. Let us us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, Lord, if there are people here, individuals here that have their hands raised. Lord, I know that that is because the Holy Spirit is prompting them. And we praise you, God, that you are working through meek words and and, and the the power of your word. We pray, oh Lord, that those who desire for deliverance, those who desire, oh God, for uh, another level in their service to you, Lord, if they are desiring to serve you with all their heart, but a lot of things are holding them back, I pray, oh God, that you will bring deliverance so that they may serve you freely. Help them to experience the freedom, oh Lord. Help them not to to serve out of uh, of tiredness, serve out of reluctance, but help them to serve out of love, out of gratitude, out of thanksgiving, out of outpouring of the Spirit, out of outpouring of love. I pray, O oh God, that you would pour out your love in their hearts, O oh God, so they may serve out of love. If they are tired in their body, if they're tired in their mind, if they're tired in any part of their being, I pray, O oh God, that you rejuvenate them right now in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I pray, O oh God, that in the days to come, that you will open doors and you will open opportunities for them to see that you have done a work in them and so that they can proclaim the excellencies of you in this dying world, that many more people could come to the fold of salvation, like the mother, Peter's mother in law, help them to be got up in the bed, O oh Lord, of depression, got up from the bed of sickness, got up from the bed. O God, of every other illness or bondage, and help them to serve you, O God, with the whole heart, O Lord, so that you may proclaim your gospel in the ends of the earth. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.